In a previous video, I made the argument for owning a PlayStation Vita in today's current year. And one of the strongest cases I made for running out and buying one of these consoles are its capabilities once you mod it. So that's kind of what I want to go over in more detail. I kind of want to do a quick walk around my modded PlayStation Vita and elaborate more on what this thing is capable of and why if you own one, you should definitely mod it. And if you don't own one, you might consider picking one of these up in order to mod it. First up is its usefulness as a retro emulation machine. Now I understand that today's modern smartphones are pretty much all you would need in order to enjoy retro emulation on the go. But the PlayStation Vita is no slouch, and it can run all of your 8-bit and 16-bit games perfectly. The console is even capable of running most N64 games relatively well. Compared to other older handhelds that are on the market, as a retro emulation machine, the PlayStation Vita kind of stands head and shoulders above all the others. Up next are its capabilities as a PlayStation Portable. Once you install custom firmware on your PlayStation Vita, you can install Adrenaline on it which pretty much at the push of a button turns the PlayStation Vita into a fully functional PSP. You can even set the PS Vita's right analog stick to actually be useful while playing certain PSP games. This is an extremely useful tool and turns your console pretty much into a two-in-one. Anything that worked on the PSP will work on the PlayStation Vita through adrenaline, giving you the best of both worlds. With a modded PlayStation Vita, you can also install a utility that allows you to exploit the console's Bluetooth, enabling you to connect a DualShock 4 controller and play your PlayStation Vita in a tabletop mode, making the console much more Switch-like. I understand it makes it less of a handheld, but there are some games on the PlayStation Vita that this is really useful for. Fighting games in particular, where using a combination of face buttons as well as touch controls can feel a bit awkward. Once again, a great feature that you can only access with a modded PlayStation Vita. Up next is utilization of memory expansion. With a modded PlayStation Vita, you can ditch the proprietary memory sticks that came out for the console, and you can actually use the console's cartridge slot to run and install everything off of a micro SD card. This is a fantastic tool, allowing me to store my entire PlayStation Vita library onto one SD card. Now, I was a bit iffy about mentioning this one, but I figured since I use it all the time, I might as well. Up next is the PKGJ utility. Essentially what this thing is, is almost like a free shop. And as of the making of this video, it's still fully operational and working. This thing has everything, every PlayStation Vita game, every PSP game, and every PSP mini. I used it to fully install all of my physical Vita games as well as all of my physical PSP games onto my Vita console. So I'm literally able to have my whole Vita library and my PSP library all on one handheld device. Of course, this thing can be used for video game piracy and to each its own, but it's available and it's definitely a useful tool that I have on my modded PlayStation Vita. And lastly, in my opinion, the best thing about having a modded PlayStation Vita is for its homebrew scene. Similar to the PSP, there is a ton of awesome homebrew for this console. You can even get a fully working version of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas that runs at full speed and looks great on the PlayStation Vita. There's also a ton of other homebrew that's inspired by some popular games made for some other consoles. Homebrew on the PS Vita opens up a whole new world for this console. As I stated in a previous video, the only argument I have against running out and buying a PS Vita is they're still pretty expensive, and a lot of the things that they're capable of doing, you can do with other devices, like an average level smartphone. So it kind of makes it hard to justify running out and getting one right away. Hopefully in the near future, we'll see prices for this console go down, and that's when I would recommend running out and getting one. But still, if you have one and you're on the fence on whether or not you should mod it, I say it's definitely worth it. Or if you could find one of these for cheap, you should definitely look into modding it. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.